Well, hey, good day. Welcome back to the channel. Well, it's a Sunday afternoon, and last week I started working on a camera design idea, which was to kind of take what would be normally a pinhole camera concept and try to fit a improvised lens into it. And I had a cool little sketch here that I made up. But I started thinking today, as I was looking at that sketch, seeing what I did to make it, I realized I have this whole evolution of my sketch journals that I've started probably back in the mid-1990s. And it's gone through a period of uh, decades, evolution of how I do things. I thought it would be kind of fun just to go through how I do my little sketch journals. Uh, it's not the right way. It's not the wrong way. It's just the way I do them. But maybe it gives you guys some ideas. Stay tuned. Well, looking back on my bookcase, I have this uh, sketch journal. It's really just a art sketching booklet, wire bound. This dates back to 1996 through 1997. So this is probably in the days right before journaling got real popular, the, the modern revival of journaling, I guess, because this is more like art paper. Anyways, uh, this was kind of my formative introduction to sketch journaling. What I was doing was conceptualizing a lot of different photographic homemade camera ideas. So for instance, this one right here, this is an idea for a film spool camera that used a strips of paper negatives and how the mechanism would work and everything. It was kind of an interesting thing. I was using mechanical pencil sort of drafting techniques, little kind of cartoon style logos and uh, headers, little arrows to delineate the parts like that. And essentially these things were bound in sketchbooks, right? So here's another idea for a pinhole camera that would take a four by five film holder. And this is kind of indicative of the way I did a lot of my journaling, not only sketch journaling, but writing kind of journaling, is they were in bound types of books. Here's another sketchbook. Starts in December 4th, 1997, and I have a little lit sheet here at the front that tells all kinds of the different interests that I'm interested in and things that I was doing. We start out with some sketches for a video that I was working on. It was going to be a kind of puppetry kind of black and white video called City Central, which was a video that I ended up making back in the, that time period and done on to high eight analog video. Oh yeah, this is a collapsible bellows camera idea, which is kind of cool. It's a folding large format camera with a collapsible bellows. So the film holder and the whole bellows is just a pyramid shaped piece of black plastic film or fabric. And you have a series of these film holders and they collapse down and the, the base of the pyramid is your film plane. There's a piece of film or paper in there. You collapse it down and you can store a number of these in a carrying case. And then when you want to use the camera, you unfold one of these and stick it on this camera frame. Anyway, that was kind of an interesting idea. I had all kinds of crazy ideas like that. Here is an idea, a whole th series of sketches that I was doing for a mechanical television using a scanning dr slit type aperture drum and a light source that would be modulated with a video signal. Anyways, it was kind of an idea of recreating the early days of uh, television technology. Of course, I never built that, but the sketch is there. Uh, telescopes, bicycles. I even was working on a force gauge idea here, which is interesting. A model Zeppelins. That was a whole other thing. These are sketches of different ways to join lightweight pieces of balsa wood to make the main rings, the rigid main rings of a rigid airship. So up until 2001, I guess, maybe 2002, I was kind of doing these sketches in these bound books. So there's a good and a bad thing to bound journal books. The good thing is all the sheets are together. They're bound together. You can open it up and figure out where you last left off and then continue with your next drawing. And that's pretty cool. But the bad thing is they're bound, they're fixed. And so if you wanted to organize them later on, 
in terms of subject matter, like break out all your drawings that are on one subject, put them in their own notebook. You can't easily do that. And so that's why I started doing this idea of loose leaf sheets that were intended to be bound into a three ring binder. An example would be, but I had a template here. I had an area for hole punching. I had a lines up here for the title sheet one of however many. So if you had a multi-page project, you could document the number of pages. And then just a big area in the middle uh, delineated with a border that you could sketch out your ideas. This is kind of the typical way I did things with a title, kind of in cartoon style lettering and little bullets that were kind of la that style. I've kind of stuck with this whole loose leaf form of journaling ever since then because uh, it's just a lot easier to organize. I can pull sheets out individually. I can have one notebook just for photography sketching, other notebooks for different kinds, other subject matter sketching. So this one I was doing on quarter inch grid paper. You can see that I did the drawing first and then afterwards I three hole punched it. And when you do that, you sometimes lose a little bit of text or drawing because you're not really paying attention at least when I get excited about a new idea and I want to uh, capture it on paper as a sketch, a lot of times I would just very hurriedly grab a sheet of paper, start drawing it, and in this case, I'd forget about my need for a left margin. Uh, I would maybe do a really hasty kind of crude title on top or sometimes don't even put a title on top until the very end. Uh, I've tried to be a little bit better over the years about organizing how I do the sketching. And so over a period of time, I started using different formats of paper. So one of the formats of paper was an example of this. This is the um, engineering paper that you get. It's Ampad brand. comes in a pad. It has a quarter inch grid on the back side and on the front side it just has a blank sheet with some fields. It has a, like a title field and a nice thing it has this whole area here that delineates where the holes are. I got to the point then where I started being a little bit more um, disciplined about when I was doing a sketch, I would at least start by drawing a crude dividing line on the left side that would give me sort of enough area for hole punching. And then I would put another line across the top that would give me an area to write a title. And it's not that hard to do that. Just a quick vertical line, horizontal line, then you can start sketching. It doesn't interfere the creative process that much. So um, this was an idea documented back on December 7th, 2005 for a roll film paper strip camera. So a big PVC pipe spools with four inch wide or even eight inch wide strips of uh, photo paper, like uh, eight by 10 sheets taped together or whatever into a big box camera. Anyways, so this kind of became the way that I did my journaling using that kind of border thing, giving you room for hole punching, giving you room for a title on top. And I've kind of pretty much stuck with that over the years since then. Uh, I've tried to be disciplined about it, although there are times when I'm hastily doing some kind of project. And again, here is one where I hole punched right through some numbers. It depends upon how quickly you are doing your drawing, how much thought you're putting into it. Sometimes if I'm out in the workshop, and I want to just grab a sheet of paper and do some quick dimensions for something that I'm in the middle of building. You know, my hands are all dusty with sawdust or whatever, and I'm not in the, in the studio here sketching. I'm just wanting to quickly lay out some ideas. And then later on when the project's done, sometimes I look at those crudely done sheets and I say, I should probably save that. So I'll three hole punch it and they say, oh, that looks pretty crummy. You know, I got the holes are going through writing and words and stuff. So last week, uh, this is all leading up to last weekend, I uh, was really starting to do some serious thinking about improvised lenses and how most of the homemade cameras I've built over the years are pinhole cameras. And I would like to start using improvised optics. And one of the main kinds of lenses that I like to use is there's a set of binocular lenses I got out of a Bushnell or whatever, seven by 50 binoculars. So these front elements, they're, they're doublets, I think. There's two pieces of glass in each one. They're 50 millimeters in diameter and they project a focal length of 150 millimeters, roughly six inches. Uh, so I've used these uh, lenses over the years in various kind of foam core, crudely built box cameras, but I was thinking, is there a way to improve the quality of the, of the optics? So I was playing around with this binocular lens last week in the afternoon uh, window light and just focusing on the scene out the window. And I realized that if I curved the film plane, so instead of it being flat, it's curved, it actually gets 
pretty good center to edge sharpness. The image circle that this binocular lens uh, throws is about perfect for five by seven. The angle of view is a little tight for four by five, but it'll cover five by seven pretty good. So I started sketching out this uh, idea for a five by seven curved film plane box camera that uh, uses a binocular lens. And so I used my Lamy Safari fountain pen with blue black ink to sketch out this basic top view of the curved film plane, the lens, I knew it was 150 millimeter of focal length. Then I knew I wanted a seven inch wide curved film plane and I had to figure out, okay, if I curve the, the paper, how wide is that be and how deep is that uh, curve? So I had to go through a little bit of basic math and calculate those numbers here. But I threw this piece of paper into my uh, Torpedo 18 typewriter afterwards and typed up a little header. And then I got inspired and typed up some additional notes that I had failed to write by hand. And afterwards, I was so inspired by the way this combination of hand-drawn fountain pen ink and red and black typewritten text, I was so inspired by that that I redid the illustration and here it is. So I have my hand-drawn fountain pen inked illustration and everything else is pretty much typed, including the little math that I did uh, use to calculate the dimensions of the curved film plane area. So uh, I'm really happy about this and it looks really cool. But the important thing I think I did is when I first grabbed an empty sheet of printer paper, I hole punched it at the very beginning, and I thought that was a cool idea. You know, it only takes me, what, 10, 15, 20 years to figure this stuff out. But if you hole punch the paper up front, then you don't have to worry about punching through some crucial illustration detail or letters or numbers that you, you would otherwise lose. So hole punch it first, grab some basic printer paper that's good for both typing and sketching and fountain pen. And I like the inky look of the fountain pen, the... Uh, that blue-black ink looks real nice. I like the look of the red and the black typewriter text. It's interesting how you can do these little mathematical equations with a typewriter also. Uh, it takes a little bit of uh, doing. And instead of me spelling out the word pi, as in 2 pi r, I, <laughs> I did like a capital H and then I back rolled the plat in one click and did a, a hyphen through it or something. It doesn't really look like pi that much, but anyway. It was fun, and so I'm thinking going forward with this, this is a nice look. It has a nice appearance, and it kind of reminds me of older kinds of technical publications that you might have seen where they had actually typewritten text with illustrations. And that is a really cool concept, and I'm thinking going forward, that's what I'm going to do. So that's, that's kind of the current setup that my sketching does. I think starting out with a blank sheet of paper, you basically sketch the drawing, but don't put any text in it. Just sketch it. And then roll it into your typewriter, type out the title, the date, and then start typing out all your little details, your little call-out notations. Yeah, that's it. Joe's sketch journal. I got multiple volumes of my photography sketch journals. I have other sketch journals that cover a wide variety of subject matter, not just camera making, but, you know, abacuses and model Zeppelin airships and all kinds of crazy ideas. What, what was the list of things? Uh, pinhole photography, homemade tripods, home movies, especially video, dioramas, paper cutouts for video, Zeppelin airships, RC tethered model hot air balloons, Abacus theory and construction. So all this different stuff. I even see stuff here for a homemade bicycle technology, electric bicycles, and uh, all kinds of stuff here. So, okay, here's an idea for a camera project I've never built. I'm throwing this out to you guys in the world. You build a pinhole camera where the top sides, bottom, the other five sides opposite the pinhole are covered in photographic paper. And then... Uh, once the image is exposed and the paper negatives are processed and you can make positive contact prints or you can use Harman Direct positive paper or you can reversal process the negative paper when you process it when it's developed. Any event, you have these positive prints and you lay them out in an identical sized viewing chamber with a peep sight viewfinder. And what I didn't draw in here is you can have a light source, illumination light source, right adjacent to the peephole in the box to illuminate the interior. And what you'll see 
uh, looking through the the aperture, you'll see a, a physical representation of the scene that the original camera took, almost three dimensional, like kind of like a diorama. And of course, you could also taper the camera slightly. Instead of it being cubicle, you could have tapered edges uh, sides so that it looks more like it recedes into the distance, and gives you more of this kind of a view. That is a diorama camera. I've never built one of those, but there it is. Created the idea created in May of 2006. I think it's important if you're a creative person and if you're visually oriented, you have an idea in your mind, put it down on paper. Grab yourself a pen, pencil, whatever, and if you can refine your, your technique and your method over the years like I have, I like using fountain pen, I like using the typewriter, both of those look really nice, but this is Joe Van Cleve giving you guys just some creative ideas. If you have some time off between now and the new year, a lot of us do have a little bit of time off from work, I just encourage you guys to sit down with a blank sheet of paper and your favorite pen or pencil and start sketching out some ideas. I'd love to see what you guys come up with and comment down below if you have any uh, tales and stories about your creative life with sketching and writing, journaling, especially like ideas, these kind of things, right? Project ideas. How do you guys do it? I'd love to hear your story. Leave it down below. Okay, until next time, as always, stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.